Hello everybody, it's a Cinemat Haven here today, and I'm going to be bringing you guys a double helping of Ace Tankers. Something I have actually never done on the channel. I've actually never taken Ace Tankers and just decided to say, hey, I'm going to show you guys some Ace gameplay. But that's actually not the only thing that I want to focus on today. Um, today, for players, for anyone really, including Super Unicums, we all suffer from situational awareness map awareness and sometimes finding a location to try and lock down sometimes you're better off just waiting for the enemy team to come to you rather than getting into a scenario that well doesn't really need to be so today we're going to be taking a look at the t11 oe3 and the m48 patent some american ace tanker helpings and i'll tell you now they're going to be pretty good to watch. So, first match, we're going to be taking a look at the E3 and then moving over to the M48 pattern. Um, the crew setups on these, we're also going to take a look at the crew and equipment that I'm running at the end of the match. So, afterwards. And then move on to the next tank. Repeat the process. Y you guys get the gist of it. But, E3, this is one of those tanks that, well, not a lot of people really sit down and say... Uh, this is a must-have tank, or specifically, they just say, this is one of those tanks that grinding it out, you know, I'd rather grind out the E4. Personally, I actually probably would kind of like to grind out the E4 over the E3, but the E3, there's a lot of scenarios that this tank ends up in that it's just unbeatable. Just because you got that 275 hatch armor your weak spot is not even a weak spot along with that you know we're going slow and i'm sorry for the spotty replay obs has been acting up on me a little bit i should have reset it as soon as i noticed it was uh kind of framing down a little bit dropping a few frames but i didn't i was not really worried about it it started to happen immediately this match and i noticed it while i was playing because both monitors are right next to each other so it's like real quick oh that don't look right you guys ever tried to play off OBS? It's horrible. I don't know how streamers can do it. Uh, there's like a half second delay in between the movement, and it, it's just, I don't know how. But um, uh, I should have fast forward this replay. That This thing, it's slow. It is sluggish. It's like the mouse. But watching the mouse replays, you don't really feel too bad about that. And there we go. Um, immediately taking a shot from the right, I didn't even notice. And best part is, I never looked at the top right of the screen to look at how much was blocked. Uh, for a moment, I was thinking he might have the 88, because my tracks never got taken off. But then again, the E3 does have a pretty decent, chunky amount of health on its tracks. So, you know, it's, it takes a little bit more to break these tracks off. Um, but getting them off and keeping them off, I mean, if you got a six-second reload, you can keep them off. Honestly, on the E50... I prefer to run the 88 over the 105 just because it's basically the same penetration combined with really, really slow reverse speed E3. Oh gosh. But no, the E50, I prefer the 88. Faster fire rate, plus they buff the alpha from 240 to 280. Uh, makes that tank pretty versatile right now. But E3, this is not a tank that is meant to be rushed in. No, you don't want to rush inside your E3. You want to take your matches pretty slow. You want to try and think ahead of the time. Um, me, this is the moment I'm thinking. I don't know how much. Uh, I don't know what gun the E50 has. And I don't know if I want to risk turning around. Um, right here is another mistake I make. I start loading in the HE shell whenever I should have just left the AP round in. Because the AP would have been an insta-kill on him because he took a hit immediately after. I turned around as soon as I realized that I was like, oh, I feel dumb. This is not even guaranteed the pin either. But lucky for me, I do set him on fire. And then the Panzer 7 does bounce. And now the angle I held right there in between both of them, I'm making up my mind. Who do I want to go for? I know the Panzer 7 is exposed to my team right now. I know that the E50 isn't. And right here, we dirt the round in front of us. There we go. Panzer 7 trying to come up and rush behind us. Um, the 4005 behind me had my back. So that was pretty nice. Right here, I see the E50 approaching. I'm rotating my tank, but I'm watching him. I want to know where he's at. And there we go. We're going to put one shot in Andre the Giant. Kind of hoping the team can finish him off because I have some other things to worry about. 
And coming up pretty soon, we're gonna... Ooh, we are on fire. AP round. I don't use any fire extinguishers because the amount I get set on fire, it's not much at all. And the E50, I kind of know that I don't want to really waste a round on the E50 just because he can't pin me if I'm facing him frontally at all. So for me, focusing up the E50, I didn't really feel a point. My team in the back, they're able to handle him. We're going to load an APCR now. So with the E50 pushing up, I only ever tried to put one shell into him. And that was about it, because I knew that my team behind me, the Chisel and the 4005, were just putting in really good work. So, it's it, I didn't really need to pay attention behind me. Now, I am literally the only tank in the front row in this area. Um, this entire match, it was me, the 4005, and the Chisel on this right side holding it against a Panzer 7, a Type 4, an E-50, Andre the Giant. We had three tanks holding back seven tanks. Whenever it comes down to crossfires and setting up things correctly, um, like this right here, you know, thinking ahead and just thinking, where can I go to help try and get that depression that I need to be able to get these shots in? Right here, I'm gonna be just, rather than going over, there's a spot that I can back up, I can elevate the rear of my tank, giving me the gun depression that I'm going to need. And it, it, it just feels so good being able to do that. Now there goes the uh, the Lorraine and the Type 5. Type 5, he's using the big gun, he's using the derp. So we put another round into him, dropping him down to 700 hit points. I kind of don't feel like I want to sit out in front of him for any... In the, really, there's no need to sit out in front of him anymore. He is down to a two shot against the 120. He goes down to a one-shot against a gun like mine, and then I see a full health E100. Now, sure, scenarios like this don't pop up often, or they pop up all the time, and sometimes your team in the background is just absolute Muppets and kind of feels like they're unreliable, but whenever the situation favors you, you can get matches like this. Now, it's not all the time. I probably should have fired the second that was loaded, but I like to aim in my shots. I like to make sure that I'm guaranteeing a pin rather than shooting the floor like I did against the E50. Because that was a blast. But, matches like this, you know, ace tankers, I don't really see the benefit in showing off ace tanker matches because th that is the absolute best you're going to perform inside of a tank. Don't get me wrong. Ace tanker matches, if it's raw damage, if it's assist damage, that's awesome. What I like to show on my channel is the average. What you can achieve or what is possible to be achieved with certain playstyles more than ace tankers. Um, don't get me wrong, ace tankers do make a big difference whenever it comes down to looking at some content and some other things. Because it, it gives you an idea on the, I guess you could say, the higher skill cap group on what they're doing. But here inside the E3, we did 6,436 along with 1,200 assisted. Now, up next, we're going to be taking a look at the M48 Patton. And this is a tank that I've had for a very long time inside my garage. I have the year one emblems on this tank, and you were only able to equip them during year one. So if the tank was in your garage during the first year the game was released, you were able to get these emblems and equip them on your tank. Um, the E3, so I enjoy the E3. I'm using improved ventilation, traction system, and advanced loader. So the traction system, I'm not really using this for the max speed or the reverse speed buff. I'm using it for the haul rotation. Because it the haul rotation speed of this tank, if you get it up high enough, you can make it to where if someone's trying to circle you, you can kind of catch up to them. It's also the entire reason why the commander of this tank is also using clutch braking and off-road driving combined. So using these two perks combined with traction system or even power, you know, power terrain. Power terrain could be another really good one to combine with this just because you're upping your power to weight. Um, born leader, rapid loading, clutch braking, off-road driving, muffled shot, six sense, situational awareness, track mechanic, and steady aim. So that's the E3 setup. It's it for me it kind of feels like a basic setup. 
Except for the fact that it's like, I've been playing the tank for a very long time. And having the equipment and the idea on what to use on it, you know, for for you or for anyone else, maybe my playstyle is not a good fit. Because I like to get into a position to be able to lock it down. And whenever that happens, you know, it also depends on the day. There's some days I'm extremely aggressive. Other days I'm passive. For me, I'm all over the place. It's like, uh, you know, you, you turn on your favorite songs and you hit shuffle. It's almost like a bipolar anger management disorder. Um, that is how my World of Tanks gameplay goes 90% of the time. And up next, we're going to be taking a look at the M48 Patton. Um, this is another tank that, yeah, it's just all around. I believe the M48 Patton to be one of the better mediums in the game. Don't get me wrong, there's other mediums out there that will outperform the Patton quite a bit. But for a newer player, I find the Patton to be that all-rounder that's able to spot. It, it, it has a really good gun. It has just a lot that it's able to offer. So, if you guys are looking to grind out a new tank and you do not have the M48 Patton yet, I would recommend highly to start grinding out this line. Especially since the tier 9 was recently buffed and they gave it the tier 10 gun. And uh, more than likely I'm going to be buying that tank back. Because I can tell you guys now, it is broken. That they gave it the tier 10 gun. And it sees tier 7s. You, you can imagine how those tier 7s feel whenever they get hit by 268 millimeters of standard pin. And the fact that they never need to fire a single heat round the entire time they're playing the match if they're top tier. Even against tier 10s, 268 is quite a bit, as you guys are going to be seeing inside this replay as well. And me, I'm actually really proud about this replay. Because I did both these matches within the last hour. Um, I know I'm, I slack off on making content. And I know I take a year, but I, I have an excuse. I'm not sorry. I, I'm not sorry, but I have an excuse. I am on day 14 in a row at work right now. I am just tired exhausted each time I log on um, I passed out in my chair the other day and yeah it's just it, it, it can be a little little uh, rough you know working a whole lot but whenever someone leaves and then you got to train new guys I've been stuck on swing shift I'm gonna be stuck on swing shift for probably another month or two so I'm, I'm just stuck but whenever it comes down to it I can put in five matches and in those five matches, I'm going to make sure that I play to my absolute fullest. That way, the content I bring you guys is on point. This match, what I want to focus on is situational awareness. Not really much about the combat and how much I'm locking my turret. Locking your turret, so for instance, right here. You know, I'm taking my time to aim at the compulsor. And I remembered in this very moment, I need to back off. I'm going to be coming right here. Now watch. I lock my turret. Look left. Lock. Go straight on. If a shot would have come at me from that way, my turret's at an angle, which is going to increase the armor rating. That is something I recommend you guys to try out. Um, there was one tank I would have loved to get a mastery badge in to show you guys the matches that I played inside of it tonight, but they were both first class masteries. One of them was a 6,000. The other one was at 5,700 inside the E5. And I find that those matches that I played inside the E5 were actually probably some of the best examples I can make of situational awareness. And sure, one of the matches wasn't the fastest. But the thing is, not every scenario is meant to be the fastest. You know, there's, there's moments you got to play passive. You know, you're stuck in a really bad position. You got a passive scout. You got a proxy spot because there's nothing else you can really do except for rely on the team. Hopefully they can help you. Here, I'm actually aiming for the tracks on the uh, Quillen, but the second I saw he's straight on and he's a two shot, rather than tracking him, I would have rather put the damage in. But whenever it comes down to your gameplay and the things that you're doing inside the game, the last thing you guys want to do is think about doing obsessive amounts of damage in the very beginning. For instance, in this match, we're three and a half minutes in, 
I have 1,779 assisted, 1,622 dealt. You know, it's like, and I'm, I'm, it looks like I'm going quick because uh, I was actually paying a whole lot of attention to the map this game. I was trying to focus out as much as I could. But the number one thing I knew that I needed to do was be a threat. And the best way to be a threat is to not be aggressive. I'm looking at the map. I see how far spread the enemies are. I see how far spread my team is. And I kind of don't feel like reinforcing a flank right now is a great idea. There's no point to push in to provide the assistance. Because if I do, I'm just going to be risking hit points. I'm going to be losing a lot of health. We don't know what's located at E7. We have no idea what's all the way in the back back there. It's 8 versus 8 right now. And beforehand, this was kind of a losing game. You know, but because we have people who wanted to sit in the back and wait. And keep in mind, those people who sit in the back, you know, a lot of people complain about them. But I'll tell you guys now, a lot of those people who sit in the back sometimes pull out the better matches. Right here, as soon as I see all these guys got spotted, if you take a look at the terrain I was going around, I relocated somewhere to get hauled down to be able to get shots across the way. There we go, sending a blind shot off into the Conqueror as well. But, I, it, it, it's, it's really hard to talk about because finding the right things to say to be able to translate what I do inside game, it, it's like I'd have to have um, the, re the replays on slow-mo, in all honesty. I really would. But, right here, you're going to see, rather than trying to go after shots on the uh, Yag room, we're going to go after the grill. Um, we know we did just get hit from the left side, most likely from the Conqueror, because it's only 400 ricocheted. So up in the side turret there, there's another shot we're going to pull up, and now we're going to focus out the E4 a little bit. Grill's coming up, so we're going to want to back down. You know, I'm right here I'm paying attention to about four different tanks, uh, not including the tanks that I do believe are on the JK line around 8 and 9. I do believe that there's a tank down there. I don't know what it is, but I just don't want to really risk it. That's why I'm pulling back further left, knowing that I have a little bit of a hill on my right side, allowing me to be able to make plays like this. Now, the grill, some people would probably overexpose to try and, you know, take on that grill. But there's an E4 off in the distance. Along with that E4, there's also a Conqueror. It's a really fast way to die. Uh, that's a 750 Alpha, an 850 Alpha, and a 400. That's a lot of hit points they're going to go. So I kind of feel like since we have a light tank at H4, H3, I feel better off trying to cut left to get some blind shots. And without me even noticing, there's an icebreaker. And I was loading high explosives at the time, so I wasn't able to take down the icebreaker. Because I was more focused on the waffle trying to get the blind shots off. Now, you know, ammunition-wise... So far, really good. Um, I only load 27 rounds of premium inside this tank, and so far I've only been firing off standards and high explosives. Um, this match, the number one reason why I was really happy about this match was just the fact that I, I, didn't, I didn't rely on premium. I don't always rely on premium, but there are some situations that premium rounds just feel needed, just because... Uh, for instance, if you're if you're looking at a Type 5 head-on, um, the the only real weak spot on a Type 5, let's say, and you're in in a tank that only has 258 millimeters of pen, is the hatch. Now, let's say he has that hatch covered. Well, that's going to make it a lot harder to focus out that uh, Type 5 because now you have to load premium to go through the turret, to go through the thick hull structure in the front, and you're just going to find yourself lacking. So, the Ferdinand disappears. I'm thinking about it. Do I want to fire again? I do fire again. But after I fire, I decide to back up the hill. Expose my hatch. This right here is a play that it's not common to see. To be able to back up a hill and think about it, you have trees, you have bushes in the way. Why not back out of the way to try and get those out of the way entirely? Seeing the E4 come up, we're going to want to fall back down. We're going to look at the terrain, kind of think, where where can we go to use our full gun depression? Uh, we're going to try and, you know, pull off some quick shots because we don't want that weak spot to disappear. Because with the E4s 
and the most recent buff, they kind of broke them. Now, I'm going to pause this. And I'm going to say, this next bit is something I want every single person watching this to pay attention to. Keep in mind, you can do this in tier 9s as well, as long as your heat pin is above 300 and 20 millimeters, or maybe even 310, maybe 310. You just gotta wait to see it. You guys are gonna love this. I've known about it now for quite some time, but I don't think I've mentioned it on any of my videos. I love that I found this out. And... You're gonna see me swap rounds. I'm gonna load my first premium round of this game. The gun mantle of the E4, with the most recent patch, it is no longer spaced armor. You can now put heat rounds through that 300mm superstructure, and there is nothing the enemy can do about it. And the fact that I don't feel comfortable loading standards against an E4, in my opinion, is just wrong. I kind of feel like I have to shoot heat at these tanks now. And artillery bringing in some really good support there. Um, Conqueror, I remember the Conqueror was on the right side of the map, and there we go, we're gonna spot him out. Tank, destroy, there we go, 754. And our last standard round, out of 27 of them, and two premium rounds fired this entire match. One high explosive, three premium rounds now, and the third one was a bounce. The second one was also a bounce. So technically one premium pin this entire game but 27 standard rounds. That's quite a bit of standard rounds to go through uh, in any match. And for me, honestly, you don't need to rely on premium, but there's some tanks out there that you kind of have to rely on premium. And it's, it's, it's really sad to know that. That's how it is though. It is what it is. So, 5,987 damage dealt, 26 direct hits, and I went through that way too fast. I need to slow down. But yeah, Mastery Badge, working on my third mark of excellence on the M48 patent, but 3,047 assisted as well. Now, coming back to the actual main game, exiting the recording, I still have these matches inside my personal log. So I'm able to actually go over, show off the detailed statistics here, and... Right there, four enemies destroyed. We blocked 1,780, so we blocked most of our health. And near the end of the match, we were still full health. We still had hit points to play with. We were able to get in, be aggressive near the end. But at the same time, we had our area that we wanted to lock down. Situational awareness is not something that you're going to learn in a day of playing the game. It's something that's going to take a lot of time invested to be able to learn the maps learn what's going on and everything else. Efficiency report, uh, the E4, pretty sure he wasn't exactly happy with the 1,165 I dealt to him. One going straight through the uh, superstructure of the gun mantle. And just... The play on this map, you know, it, sometimes you end up in scenarios that are just fantastic thing is, is that learning your tanks is one of the biggest keys to being better at the game. Now, whenever you're trying to learn a new tank, your best bet is to take time looking at the armor model, thinking, what is the benefits to this tank? Looking at the gun, looking at everything. And then thinking to yourself, AP and APCR can overmatch but they ricochet at 65 degrees. Heat rounds don't ricochet until it's 85 degrees, but heat rounds try going through the armor at that angle, so they don't readjust at all. They hit the armor, they try to go through. High explosives, they just outright detonate and they hurt. Strum Tigers hurt. Um, I swear, the next time a Strum Tiger shoots the wall I'm next to and covers my viewfinder in dirt and breaks it, 
I'm just going to wonder if the next time I fire, if it's going to clean off it so I can see better. <laughs> but it, there's really only so much we can do. And me, as a content creator, there's only so much I can do. Um, the one thing that I can say is that I know I take a long time to put out content. That's because I work a lot. However, if you guys leave a comment, I try my best to get back to you. If you have a question, ask. I will take the time out to try and get a good answer for you. Or if, let's say, you're looking for a new tank, you want a recommendation, or if you're looking to do a trade-in, someone a little bit ago asked about the Sinlac, if it's still good, I highly recommend the Sinlac. That thing is a fantastic little light tank. I haven't played it in a while, but now that we... I talked about it with him. I kind of want to pull it out again and try and get 100% on a tank for once. Um, for instance, the E75, I am kind of want 100% but at the same time I don't just because gold marks, they don't look good with the black and white camo. The E5, I'll probably never 100% that tank just because it, the gold and the black, I mean... Uh, what, what would be your guys' opinion on the E5? Would gold marks with a black skin with a lot of black and white look good? Because in my opinion, I don't think it would look good at all. Honestly, I think the fourth mark of excellence just ruined matchmaking for a couple of weeks and really brought it down. So, I've tried out a couple of builds on my M48 patent. I did a gun build, gun focus build a while back, and that gun focus build was intense but the m48 it's already got a good gun you don't really need to rely on anything else really on it so i'm running optics loader and improved ventilation it's a very basic loadout for what i normally do the e5 right here where the crew is located this is the crew that i was using during that match we had six cents rapid loading born leader steady aim clutch braking situational awareness combined with track mechanic last stand off-road driving last stand this is a perk that I I have fallen in love. Um, a lot of perks in this game for my ninth perk, I don't know what to put unless it's a scout. If it's a concealment build, I kind of usually don't go for last stand. I'll do all the concealment perks, uh, situational awareness. Sometimes I'll skip out on rapid loading just because it's a concealment build. I'm made to be hidden and take my shots whenever I have the chance. So rapid loading, that's one of those perks that you can actually trade rapid loading with muffled shot, and that would be a pretty good equal exchange on those two perks. But that's only if you're looking to make a concealment build and not really worry about um, your rate of fire. But these two matches, ace tankers, I'm, I'm not really... I'm not ever focused on acing a tank. It just happens for me. I play the game... And I, I call it good. I'm not a person who cares about his stats too much. For me, the number one thing that I care about the most, and the entire reason why I made my channel, was just to help people. Um, just a, a, probably a little bit of history about myself. Star Trek Online, uh, in the time I played that game, I was a part of five different fleets. They're basically clans. And... In the time I was in those fleets, I probably helped out 200 plus people one-on-one -on -one during the time I did that. And YouTube, I find YouTube to be the best way to help multiple people on the same subject without needing to sit down with them one-on-one -on -one individually. But sometimes sitting down one-on-one -on -one is the best way to do it. So for newer players just getting into the game who are up to tier 8 and you're struggling a little bit, if you need someone to play with and you're up um, later nights as of right now, I have no problem teaming up with you. And everyone else who has sent me a message saying that they're ready to team up, I'm also ready to team up. I've just been working a crap ton of training new guys and having an absolute blast. So that, that's about it. Other than that, you guys... Um, if there's anything you feel like I missed or I should have added in this video, let me know. That way I can kind of focus it out a little bit. Or if there's something you guys do want me to focus out, keep in mind I'm still working on the K91 version 2 and the E75TS for reviews. But other than that, uh, the in-between times. Because I take a year and 
30 hours to do anything anymore. And uh, OBS is just stuck on a full screen or whatever reason. I, I, yeah, I'm a Muppet. Okay. Absolute Muppet. But whenever it comes down to the game, I enjoy World of Tanks. I hate the matchmaking right now because I can't play any tier 8s late night. I'm always one of two tier 8s in a tier 10 lobby. And keep in mind, this isn't like I play one match. And that's all I play. And I stop playing because I end up against sense. No, this is like 15 games in a row that I'm bottom tier, extreme bottom tier. Don't get me wrong, the XP and the silver payout, if I have a decent game in those, is amazing. But it, it just, it's, it's not as much fun knowing that I'm a tier 8 in a multiple tier 10 lobby. I think the next time I end up in another one like that, uh, the last one I had like that that I did really good in, was the uh, Captured King Tiger on the Tips and Tricks video. If you guys want to go back and check out that match. Um, yeah, I was just one of three tier 8s and still pulled out a 4,000 damage. Ended up as number one even on the enemy team winning score screen MVP. It was that good of a game. Now imagine the base XP if it would have won that match. That would have been my match of the year rather than the Sinlac. So, other than that, you guys, if you liked the video, leave a like, comment, subscribe. Seriously, if you guys have questions, do not hesitate to ask. I try my best to get back to people who have legitimate questions. And I just have no problem. It, or if I don't reply, just put a question mark underneath it, and then I'll have to reply. Or else I'll look like a complete fool. But, you guys, have a fantastic day. And see you on the battlefield. Just don't shoot me in artillery, because it hurts like no other. I just despise getting shot by Artie. It hurts so much. It's the reason why I sold the waffle. And we'll never buy it back. Because artillery is just pain. So much of it. Ugh.